Welcome back guys. I hope you're beginning to understand more and more about how to build your own reports or especially how to customize existing ones inside of Odoo so we don't need to start from scratch. So today we're going to be talking about tables on our reports. These are tables generated from a many to one relationship. So like a sales order has sales order lines or an invoice has invoice lines. This is likely to be the most technical of our discussions around reports. There are going to be some other ones related to logic, but this one, you're going to have to step through bit by bit. Again, it's really nice because in Report Builder, we can make a change, see it reflected in the report example. But take this slow. If you need to slow me down, go ahead and slow me down. If you need to watch again, go ahead and watch again. But you'll want to understand how to do this. All that being said, you can definitely do this. We'll take it bit by bit. We're going to go ahead and hop in and start editing an invoice today so that it looks more like what we want. So here we are in Odoo. Let's make sure that we've got our developer mode on. And then we're going to go ahead and go into invoices. From here, go into studio. Go to reports. And if you're actually doing this for real, I'd encourage you to make a copy. If you don't know how to do that already, look at my other video. But because I'm in a demo and I'm not going to be using this later, I'm just going to use our base one here. So let's go ahead and go into invoices real quick. And I'm going to walk you through the structure of what we're looking at for a table. So right now we have a table that represents all of our invoice lines. We're going to try and find this guy and make sense of it. So let's go into edit sources real quick. And this brings us to our main XML file here. So we're going to look down, look down. The easiest thing to do I've found is to look for this first header. So we're going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down a bit, a bit more. Okay, so line 107 is where we're going to focus on first. So we've got some tags here that I want to go over and make sure that we've got a very good understanding of what these do. The first tag is table. This is saying, hey, everything inside of these two tags from line 104 all the way down to line 172 is a table okay we can take that table and we can format it in certain ways you can see this class actually provides us our format the name right here allows us to call it with other x paths but everything inside of here is a table simple enough right you can do this let's keep going so stepping inside a table the first thing we see is t head which is to refer to our header we have a row tr so table row and that table row has th items, which are table header items or tags, where we come in, we've got a class that sets some formatting for us, and then we have the actual text in the header. So let's go ahead and change this real quick. We've got description here, let's relate to description here, and we're going to say first header, just so it jumps out at us. So you see right here, now it's changed to first header. So now we want to come down into our body here. So we finished off the header. We're coming into the body and we have a class that again formats it a certain way. The really kind of interesting bit that we have right here is these T sets where we're setting these variables. So current subtotal, we're setting it as zero. Current total, setting as zero. And then we're setting a variable called lines which is going to have a value of our invoice line IDs sorted in a certain way. We need to recognize this bit because we're going to call these variables further on down the road. And if we don't know what it's calling, it's going to make it a bit confusing for us and make it hard for us to adjust this and make it work for our own needs. So let's hop into the body real quick. So the big thing that we want to notice here is this T for each. So going back, we set this variable lines. So we're saying for each line in O, which is our object, which is the invoice, for each invoice line IDs, which is our invoice lines, we want to do something. So what we're doing here is it's going to say, okay, for each of these, and then it runs us through a lot of interesting logic that we don't need to mess with right now, but it's saying for each of these, I want you to potentially create another row here in this table. Then we step even further in and say if it meets these conditions, then I want you to take the line's name and put that under the description or first header as we changed it right here. And then we have in here our line quantity right in the next column. And then we have our line dot price unit in the next column. 
So it makes it easy for us to see, okay, if I wanted to add a column here, I would need to go up, add a new header, and then add a new TD or data, uh, table data cell is what it should be to this table. That way I can adjust that as I want to. So your head may be spinning a bit with all of this. So we're going to take this, change it up a bit so you can see how things react, walk through a real example so that hopefully you get a better grounding in this and you don't walk away feeling frustrated. Well, my training is in accounting. So let's go ahead and have this show the journal entry or the journal lines tied to this journal entry just for fun. So it's actually been a couple hours since my last bit in the video. And it's not because I had to go do anything else. It's actually because the report kept saying, oh, something's broken. Oh, this isn't working. And that gets incredibly frustrating. So I want to walk you through why it happened. So let me show you one of the things I did. So I started by coming in and saying, okay, I don't need taxes anymore. Let's go ahead and remove that. We go ahead and try and save. And you see this report addition failed, which means that we can't actually do this. Now this is the really frustrating bit about XML and it's part of the reason why if you don't basically want this report as it is, you're better off creating a new one. So let me show you what's going on here. So let's go over here and look. We've got all these views that are relying on each other in different ways and we would have to trace all of that down if we want to use what this report already has. In a lot of cases, it's probably better just to build something new if we're worried about that and if we keep coming up against that error. This again brings up our safety video. It's really important that we have version control and that we save regularly because you can imagine how frustrating it would be, and I've experienced this over the last couple hours, if you're going through changing things and you're not sure what's causing you problems. You want to save often and you want to make sure that you have versions so that if you get something right, you make sure you keep it. All that aside, I still want to show you a good example. So let's go ahead and copy that section. Then we can mess with it because nothing's relying on it and we'll build out something new. So let's do this bit by bit. First thing we want to copy, we really like this table. We're just going to go ahead and change the name. So we're copying the table, Give ourselves a little bit of space here. So we've got our table. And we'll click format in a second to close this up and make it look nice. We just want to make sure to rename this table so nothing else is referencing it. So let's go ahead and put in table. And we're going to call this JE lines table. And let's go ahead and save. Now we're going to go ahead and copy our next section here. So we've got our table head. We're going to take this whole thing here. Drop it in here again. We've got our T head. I'm going to click format just because right now it's looking a bit ugly. Okay. And we're going to come back in here. We've got our description, quantity, unit price, discount, all the ones that we had previously. So we're going to trim off some of these because we really don't want all that other stuff going on. So we're going to say this is our description. We need to take this and change the name just a little bit. So T H J E description. We're going to say THJE account and change this to account. And then we're going to grab this real quick and give ourselves two more. And we're going to say THJE credit. Change this name here to credit. Oop, missed the E. And we're going to grab debit here as well. T-H-J-E debit. And we're going to go ahead and save. This is our header here. Hopefully this isn't making you burn out too much. We're almost there and you'll have these tools in your tool belt. So now we're going to build out our T-body. I'm going to copy all of this, bring it up, stick it underneath our T-head right here. Okay. And you can see I did some stuff ahead of time just to make sure we're all good. Now what we want to do is our class is good. We don't need these variables right here. We're not using them in this table. And we're going to go ahead and set a new variable called JE lines. And the value is going to be the invoice record. And we're going to go back up to our form view here. And we want it to be, instead of our invoice lines right here, invoice line IDs, we want it to be our journal items. So we're going to copy this over. 
go ahead and set this as o dot line ids get rid of all this sorting because we don't really need it right now not for what we're doing and now we're going to go into this and say t for each now it's going to be this variable je lines and we're going to call it je line for the variable now we're going to go through and do some cleanup so we don't really need these guys right here we're not doing the subtotals and we're going to come into this and say okay we want the class for the row but we're going to get rid of everything else that's giving us else's ifs all that stuff because we're doing everything we want to show everything here and we're going to get rid of this t that gives us an if we don't need it we just need these tds here so we're going to clear out everything all the way down to the row and now we're going to start building this out so i'm going to try and find one of these and make it about as simple as possible okay so we don't need this tf it's saying if we have a line name then do this okay so we're going to go ahead and remove all the way up to here and we're going to set our field so we want to come over here go to edit list view and our first one is again our label so it's going to be the name so it's line.name but again we need to change this to je line because that's our new variable here so this guy's all good we're good here we just need to change the name up here so nothing refers to it and causes us problems so we're going to call this je line name so let's go through we've got je line name for a new name and then we've got our field all set up so we're going to add three more one two three so je line account sorry count and then we're going to change this to je line account id okay and then we're going to come down to this it's going to be our je line debit and our je line credit hey guys i'm back and i'm editing i noticed that i flipped the headers for credit and debit if you're following me exactly, be aware of that. Don't do that to yourself. Let's double check what we've got here. So debit is the technical name. Credit is the technical name. Nice and easy there. So we're going to add a credit. We're going to add debit. Okay. And then we're going to clear out all these other TDs because we don't need them. So that's our full row here based on each JE line. We don't need the rest of this here because it's all of our subtotal. So let's make sure we're only clearing out what we need to. So we've got our T for each right on this level, our row, and our TDs here. Viewers, we're going to go ahead and save this guy, which I already did. So you can see the result of our hard labor here. So we have this description. We have our count. We have our credit and our debit. Now we need to clean up some of this formatting here to make our lives a little bit better to where it looks clean and we're doing this properly. So you see this text end? That's our problem on the top side, or at least on the header. So we're gonna go ahead and say text start for all these guys real quick. And most of the time you can do a lot of formatting using these classes, it makes life a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and say text start. We're gonna save, and you can see that lines up oh so nicely. And because our row was looking a little bit funky with the class we had on it, I went ahead and removed the class and it looks a whole lot better now. So you can see we have our description, we have our account, we have our credit and our debit. Wow, that was probably the most intense video I've done yet on this channel. Reports can be a big headache and I wouldn't blame you for going and having a developer do this for you. But hopefully you can see that with a little patience, you can actually come through and you can make this work for you. And let me add to patience, making sure that you practice the safety that I taught in my other video. I know I keep reiterating that, but there's nothing more frustrating when it comes to reports than coming in, messing up something that worked great before, and then not having a way to get it back. So we're actually very deep into reports at this point. I really think there's only one topic left that I really want to talk about, and that's coming in and figuring out the logic that's here. So essentially saying, if this line doesn't have this attribute, then hide it. Or if this invoice doesn't have this attribute, go ahead and hide this whole section. 
Those are important pieces to understand, so that's going to be the last bit we talk about. If you guys have any other questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. That helps me a lot, uh, but hopefully you're learning a lot here and feeling a lot more safe.